Oneness is the lived experience of peace. Now, my guest today is David Offer. Hi, David. Hi. Now, I understand, David, you um, discovered healing as a result of a stress-induced health scare from your high-powered job in London, working for the Crown Jewels. Correct. You also explored healing further and discovered that you have a natural ability as a medical intuitive. You changed direction and trained in several modalities under the International Institute of Holistic Health Therapists. Then you went on to co-found a natural health centre in Bedfordshire in England, which you ran for many years. The centre was a charity dedicated to natural treatments and education and it was a training school. So you delivered government funded projects dealing with young people who stepped out of mainstream education and those um, of young offenders on drugs in local prisons. So I'd like to welcome you to the program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Firstly, if we could just start with a bit about your background, if you could just, I know I've just done a very small pricey, but if you could just perhaps give us a little bit of an indication of where you've come from to this point. Sure, okay. Well, I was born in the East End of London and came from a very simple background. And then I had the benefit of um, working in the centre of London for the Crown Jewels and started work at 15 years old and uh, grew up within the company which I absolutely loved the work and the people um, but unfortunately in, I worked there for many years and was trained and uh, worked my way up through the company and eventually became the silver buyer um, but unfortunately in the last five years of my being there the ethos of the company seemed to change. Um, it was taken over by other people and they seemed to change the policies of the company instead of being um, um, a very caring company. It became very high, pro because it was high profile, it was um, a very expensive jewellery and watches and silverware. And it was all became about profit, which didn't sit very well with me. And so I found that in my position that I had at that time, that I was in quite some disagreement with the management, one, one, uh, one director in particular, who was uh, quite a bully, and not only through personal experience, but observation of how he treated other people, that was uh, something quite terrible. And, and so with the pressures that he Im imposed, and also the pressures of a high-powered situation in a company that was had branches all over the world, is that it became very stressful. And at one point, I was uh, rushed into hospital with a suspected heart attack. Wow! Fortunately, it was not a heart attack, but it was enough to uh, bring my attention to where I was and what I was doing. And I was at that point quite unhappy, as you can probably gather. Mm. Um, and it was around this time that I discovered um, spiritual healing. How did you discover spiritual healing? Well, I heard about these people that were not far from where I lived. And as I believe I am an open-minded person, but also quite sceptical, um, but because the scare really did have its effect, um, and I've never been one for going to doctors or having uh, drugs. So I was told about these people and I suppose I could say I was interested. Um, if I might ask, what year was that? Oh, this was all quite a number of years ago. This must be nearly 30 years ago. Right. So a long time ago. So I went to... Um, um, to who is now my, my wife, I went to her home at that time, where they were practicing from, to discover there was a lot of people that were involved in this. And so I received healing, which was very pleasant, and, and did seem to have taken effect. How did you receive the healing? What did they do? It was um, just basically what they called hands-on healing, where three people placed themselves, so I, I was laying down, and uh, they placed their hands uh, on me, and they just seemed to go into uh, a very quiet, trance-like state. And after about 
five minutes or so, they withdrew and I received healing. Now, being open-minded and inquisitive, of course, after this, and because I did feel some benefit, I started to ask, you know, well, how does this work? What is it about? And eventually asked that fateful question, could I be a healer? <laughs> this was over a period of some weeks. And so I was invited to partake in the healing there and also to develop my abilities. Um, that particularly started with meditation, um, which I found very difficult at the time because I had difficulty instilling my mind um, because I found that very difficult. As soon as I closed my eyes, I had all many thoughts to come in, particularly work orientated. And I think a lot of people would relate to that feeling of not being able to find stillness because people talk about it all the time. Correct. But our mind is like this wild <laughs> thing that keeps going. Sure. So after a period of encouragement um, from uh, Jane, my wife, um, she um, made me stick to it because I, I, I nearly gave up thinking I'm never going to achieve this. But thankfully, ultimately, after about six weeks of attempting to do so, I started to begin to, to do that. And, and to find that stillness in my head also had an amazing effect physically um, because I started not to feel so tense. Um, and I used to suffer a lot with migraine headaches at that time. Mm. And they seemed to improve. And it was through meditation that I then started to make connections with spiritual guides, if you wish. Um, but again, open-minded, but always the sceptic, so never quite sure what, whether it was just in my head or whatever. But by now I'd started to actually practice healing. And it was during this period of time that whilst my hands were on um, a client, that picture, I started getting pictures in my head. And it was almost as though I could see inside the body. And I had the great sense that my hands wanted to move. But at that time, um, I was always told that it's not the practice to allow your hands to, to wander. So after this started to happen, um, I eventually went to see Jane and said, what's going on? Because I'm getting these images in my head and getting a great sense that I want to move my hands. Well, fortunately, one of Jane's friends um, fortunate for me, not so much her friend, because she was having some difficulty, uh, she was in a bit of pain, and um, we asked her to be our guinea pig. And, and the one thing I said to her right at the beginning is, please, please, don't be nice to me. If you don't get any effect and, and, and nothing happens, please be honest, because it's the honesty that I needed, because I needed to know. Um, and as you can guess, after several workings with her, um, she found a great deal of improvement and she promised me that she was telling me the truth. So I went ahead and, and gradually got more and more into practicing healing. So just going back to the pictures that you had in your head, what sort of pictures would you see? Well, my first um, image, if you wish, of um, something in my head was during a meditation where I met uh, the very first guide that I've now come to know and rely on quite a great deal. Um, I see him as being my doorkeeper, um, so that when he's always the first one that comes, and so when he's there, um, we've created quite a nice rapport between so that the sense of just his energy I know who it is and can trust who it is and he's the one that when I go before I go to work in my process of connection he's the first one that comes forward and he presented himself um, firstly as um, the animal of a wolf but during the meditation um, he transformed into this Native American Indian and he was, um, sorry? I was just going to ask you, he transformed into a, an American Indian. He was running, the wolf was running for a time, wasn't it? Correct. So this was your first experience of Ranjit? 
Um, no, he, he was the first one to, right. to, to come. And yes, at that point, um, the, the words at that time, because it was about following and trust. And that was all I just kept, follow and trust. And following this um, very large silver wolf um, was pleasant because it was in uh, a meditation. I, it wasn't, in my mind, real. Um, but when he really went very fast through trees, and it was just trust, trust and follow. And then when we hit this clearing, um, I sat on this log, and that's when he transformed into this man, this Native American, which had the full headdress of a silver wolf. Um, and I gathered over uh, in the initial period that he, um, in his physical life, was a, a medicine man. Um, so that he was my first introduction into the spiritual world of guides. And it was a later part of that when Jane and I was on a, uh, I suppose you could say, a spiritual retreat, um, which was still very new to me. There was lots of people there that seemed to know all this spiritual aspects, and which was a bit overwhelming, to be honest. Um, but I was now very interested and asked lots of questions. And it was during that first experience that. Um, a medium approached me and started to describe this guide that she could see. And it was at that stage that I sort of openly accepted it, even though there was still that part of me that was a bit challenging, thinking, well, because I couldn't see it, she could describe anything, and how do I know? So I, I was challenging it, but I accepted it with good you know, great being grateful. And um, it was about six months later the totally different part of England, another person that I'd never met in my life before, another medium, and when she described exactly as the first lady had described, that really got my attention, because my logical brain was starting to work out, how can this be? Um, how can it not now be real? I was almost trying to prove it not real. But I couldn't, because two separate people in different places, never met them before in my life, described exactly the same person. And, so and how then, did you react to that when you realised that it was real? How did that feel for you? I was unsure, but there was something inside me that was felt very nice about it. It was comforting. To think that there was something out there that maybe I wasn't aware of, and, and because I couldn't, I didn't have the skills to see it, but it was, yes, it was comforting to think there's something else. Um, and from that time on, then um, my healing started to change. It in, started in to get. What way? Yeah. It felt as though it started to get deeper. And one thing that in the early days it was noticeable where the time span is that from the moment of connection and, and closing my eyes to the time that I returned, what to me seemed just like two minutes could be ten or even more. I, I seem to be losing tracks of time. Right. Why do you think that is? Well, at the time I didn't know. But as always, I went to Jane and asked her, what's occurring? Um, but because other people were there, of course, um, I wasn't doing this alone, they was describing what was happening. 